This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. A local veteran going the extra mile to show his support. Now at 11 o'clock, the reason close to his heart that is keeping him running. Plus, looking to make some extra cash, we'll introduce you to the organization needing to hire hundreds of Hoosiers and fast. But first off the top and new at 11 o'clock, two people are dead following a shooting on the city's east side. Police say gunfire rang out around 630 near 19th and Audubon Road. That's between Ritter and Arlington Avenue. Detectives with IMPD say a man and a woman were shot and killed. Police say homicide detectives are questioning witnesses tonight and they hope evidence at the scene will help them make an arrest. Sir quite a bit of evidence on the scene. I'm not going to relate as to what that evidence is, but as to what we were able to ascertain as of right now is that there was a quite a large disturbance that occurred either in the house or around the house. And unfortunately, um, as far too often as what we would like to see, this uh, escalated into gun violence. Detectives are now trying to determine how the two people killed were involved in that disturbance or if they were innocent bystanders. Police say they do know more information about who may have been involved and evidence on the scene that they cannot release in order to protect the investigation. As always, contact Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS with any information. A local veteran is going all out to support his fellow comrades in need. Dustin Johnson is running 100 miles to bring awareness to the issues affecting veterans. Tonight, we know he is still out running close to finishing that goal. RTV6's Troy Washington caught up with him earlier. She introduces us to the man behind this very important mission. For Dustin Johnson, the goal of 100 miles in one day took guts to pursue and heart to finish. When, when, I mean, when you put meaning behind your, your miles that you're doing. The pain becoming only a stepping stone towards the purpose in play. Johnson is a 10-year Army Reserve veteran who made it his mission to complete the Taji 100, an annual charitable run raising funds. But he's not just trying to complete the challenge. He wants to finish in one day. His goal is turning heads because it's not a requirement. Typically, veterans complete their miles throughout the entire month of February, little by little. It doesn't take much to just get out and put one foot in front of the other. He's raising awareness for the struggles endured by veterans by knocking it all out on the opening day of the challenge. And he isn't alone on his route winding around Westfield. There's no way I could come out here and do this by myself. I mean, I'd probably run 20 miles and quit. Instead, with the support of his fellow brothers and sisters from Team Red, White, and Blue, he keeps finding the power to push past any pain in the process. It's almost felt like nothing because I got these guys out here with me. Now, it is painful, but I have these guys out here with me, and it makes it that much easier. RTV6 caught up with Johnson after 67 miles of running around Westville. Even then, it was clear that he wasn't going to stop until he accomplished his goal. Until the very last mile, Johnson kept his reason for setting the goal in the first place in mind, reminding himself with every step the difference raising awareness might make. Working for you in Westville, Troy Washington, RTV6. Troy, thank you. It is heartbreaking to hear about the number of suicides involving veterans. You are encouraged to share this with any veteran who is struggling with mental health. The Veterans Crisis Line is 800-273-8255. Make sure to press 1. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast, taking a live look outside tonight from the IMS Pagoda camera. It is dry across central Indiana. Meteorologist Kyle Mounds is standing by now. And Kyle, you have good news for our Sunday? Yeah, Nicole, we are finally going to get back into some sunshine here as we get into the second half of our weekend. Tonight, we still have the cloud cover on Storm Team 6 radar and the satellite view here. You see a few of these radar echoes. Those are false echoes, nothing making it to the ground. And as we look back into Illinois, we see some of that clearing taking shape and getting a little bit closer here to central Indiana. Temperatures under the cloud cover holding steady in the middle 30s. Does feel a little bit cooler out there because of that breeze. Feels like 26 and the city feels like 30 in Bloomington. But those numbers tomorrow morning really starting off not too bad. We'll be in the middle 30s. That's about our average high for this time of year and already into the 40s by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with those partly cloudy skies. It is a brand new month and we are talking about the outlook for temperatures here in February being above average. We don't have to wait very long for that warm up though. We'll detail your Sunday forecast in a few minutes. 
All right, Kyle, thank you. Well, tonight, Carmel police need your help identifying a suspect in a vandalism case. The entire crime was caught on camera. Police say it happened just after 11 p.m. earlier this week on Monday. The suspect is seen here spraying graffiti on a wall near Monon Boulevard. Police describe this person as tall and slender with a unique walk. If you have any information about what happened here or who this person is, call Carmel police. New at 11, Carmel police are also needing your help tonight. Tracking down a missing man, 55-year-old Eugene Arrington, was last seen this morning at 11 o'clock. He went missing from the 700 block of East 116th Street. He was wearing a black jacket and black jeans and walks with a cane. Police say he does not communicate verbally. He is deaf and does not use written communication. Call police if you see him. Also new at 11, two firefighters are recovering after being injured while battling a fire on the city's east side. The fire started just before 9 on Hendricks Lane. That's near East Washington and Rural Avenue. Fire crews say the home had been vacant for some time and there were several holes in the floor. Tonight, investigators are still figuring out what caused the fire. A Northwest Indiana man set free on bond is now accused of fatally shooting his girlfriend who police say he previously attempted to kill. Hammond police say Charles Goforth is charged with first degree murder in the death of Sylvia Williams. A relative on Wednesday found Williams dead in her home. Goforth was charged with attempted murder for shooting Williams on November 1st. He was freed on a $7,000 bond and a judge allowed him to return home to Independence, Missouri. He was arrested arrested there earlier this week. Greenwood unveiled the latest safe haven baby box on Friday and now plans are already in the works for even more boxes. Brazil residents say they are working to get a box installed in the Wabash Valley. Community leaders say they're open to the idea and are working to find the best location for a box. The Hoosier State has 21 safe haven baby boxes more than any other state in the entire country. Indiana safe haven law allows a person to surrender a healthy newborn 30 days Days old or younger without fear of criminal prosecution. You know, we see so many stories of babies being found in trash cans and dumpsters, and these women get prosecuted, which they should. You know, this is an option for them to not get prosecuted. Their child's life goes on, their life goes on, and this is a good thing. You know, we, we have to start encouraging women to do the right thing, and this is one of the ways to do that. Baby boxes are now being planned for Bloomington, Mooresville, Spencer, and Evansville. The CEO of Safe Haven Baby Boxes says they hope to eventually have them in every state across the country by 2025. Covering the state house tonight, an Indiana legislator is dropping his push for a law requiring all youths to wear helmets. The bill would have required children and teens under the age of 18 to wear helmets while riding bicycles, skateboards, or skating on public property. Safety advocates backed the proposal. Representative Randy Fry of Greensburg says he modified the bill to include free helmets for, for kids because many legislators considered a helmet requirement too intrusive. Brewers and beer lovers alike descending on the Indiana State Fairgrounds today. It's for the 12th annual Winterfest put on by the Brewers of Indiana Guild. The event brings nearly 100 brewers for one-of-a-kind cask beers and local vendors. Brewers say the event allows for collaboration between beer makers. Working closely with all these other breweries, it's a really good time to talk about, hey, do you guys want to do a collaboration? I really like your beer. You get to meet uh, other breweries in your state, which I A portion of each ticket sold to Winterfest helped Joy's House, an adult day service. Last year, the donation totaled more than $14,000. If you need some inspiration to fix up your home, tomorrow is your last day to visit the Indiana Home and Garden Show. Over 10,000 people are expected to attend the show this weekend at the Lucas Oil Stadium exhibit halls. It features demonstrations from local and national companies, all designed to help you through the process of home improvement. Employees from the businesses are on site, ready to answer your questions, ranging from kitchen to bath and even gardening projects. We talked to one of the vendors today about why they take part. The home show makes it very convenient to schedule free quotes. They can come up, walk, and feel the floor that we have here, talk to us individually, and access our opinions on the floors, advantages, disadvantages. 
The Home and Garden Show runs tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tickets are just $5 for adults at the door. Children under 17 are free. You can also get discounted tickets on the event website. Hiring Hoosiers connects you to jobs, resources, and training. With the upcoming census, the Bureau needs workers to help take count. Hourly pay for census workers in Indiana will range from $18.50 to $25 per hour. The hours are also flexible. Today, the Census Bureau hosted a hiring blitz event. We talked to them to see what kind of jobs are available. Most of the jobs available now uh, are what people often refer to as census takers. These are, these are people who will go out into the field starting in May uh, to uh, help people who have not completed the census yet fill out the form. If you didn't make it to today's event, we have posted a link to apply on HiringHosiers.com. Coming up, drug addiction is a growing problem in central Indiana and across the country. Tonight, the efforts here locally to help fight the stigma against substance use disorder. Plus, just two days to go until the Iowa caucuses. The senators running for president are now here joining their rivals, crisscrossing the state, trying to reach out to voters. I'm Marcy Gonzalez with the very latest from the campaign trail coming up. The one flaw in tomorrow's forecast going to be these winds gusting around 30 miles per hour, but we'll talk about the warmer temperatures they will bring. You're watching RTV6 News at 11. Toyota, let's go places. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Tonight, police in Florida are investigating after a shooting at a funeral leaves a teenage boy and another man dead. The shooting happened in Riviera Beach, Florida. That's just north of West Palm Beach. The gunfire injured a woman and another juvenile across the street from a church. They were taken to the hospital for their injuries. Police say more than a dozen shots were detected in the area. At this hour, no arrests have been made. Tonight, the latest battle to contain the coronavirus being fought is in Massachusetts. The patient is a student at UMass Boston who traveled to Wuhan, China. He arrived back in the U.S. on January 29th. Tonight, he is now in isolation at home. The latest case bringing the confirmed number of people infected with coronavirus to eight in five states. Tonight, New York announcing it is one of 37 of the states looking into possible still unconfirmed cases. The U.S. military says if needed, it is ready to provide quarantine housing for up to 1,000 evacuees in Colorado, California, and Texas. Tonight, two Indiana colleges are restricting travel to China amid the coronavirus outbreak. IU restricting travel to China for faculty, staff, and students with guidance from the CDC. Taylor University in Northeast Indiana has canceled a study abroad program in China. Now to Democracy 2020. Democratic candidates are making a crucial last case to voters in Iowa before Iowa caucuses kick off election season on Monday. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the latest from Des Moines. President. A critical day on the campaign trail. Candidates crisscrossing Iowa with just two days left before the nation's first vote of 2020. In this consequential year, it all begins in Iowa at caucus on Monday evening. Senators running for president scrambling back ahead of Monday's caucuses. This is our moment in history. This all comes down to this pivotal moment. Trying to make up for lost time after being diverted to Washington for the impeachment trial. Uh, I thought all last week I'd be in Iowa going to one town after another, but I had a constitutional duty. Their rivals maintaining their presence here, hitting every corner of the state. Former Vice President Joe Biden on a 20-city, 17-county bus tour. The next president's going to inherit a, uh, a country divided and a world in disarray. And uh, there's going to be no time for on-the-job training. We need a president on day one. And Mayor Pete Buttigieg traveling nearly 700 miles in a swing across Iowa. Now stepping up his criticism of the race's frontrunners as he slips in the polls. The vice president is, is saying this is no time to take a risk on someone new. But I would argue this is no time to take the risk of falling back on the familiar. And several other candidates trailing even further in the polls here in Iowa are instead focusing on the next big contest. Some spending the weekend in New Hampshire, where the first primary will be held in just a week and a half. 
Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Des Moines. Marcy, thank you. The long and winding impeachment process is expected to wrap up Wednesday on the floor of the Senate with a final vote. Senate Republicans will almost definitely acquit him during the vote. Sources say the president has no plans to apologize like then President Clinton did at the end of his impeachment trial. And President Trump will deliver his third State of the Union address on Tuesday night. According to one senior administration official, the president will look to strike an optimistic tone. The theme of the speech is the great American comeback. White House officials have not said if the president plans to mention the impeachment in his speech. Well, a lot of people headed downtown tonight for the Pacers game, and we caught this. The blue and gold being supported on the IPL building. Kyle, I always like to see that. Now, Looks so nice. Yeah, not, not too bad of a night to actually get outside. A little chilly, but we're looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, by early February standards, we really can't beat this. And the next couple of days are looking fantastic for us. We're finally going to get back into some sunshine. It's been a little while. Mm, can't it's wait. It's coming back. 35 right now. We still have those clouds out there and that west breeze at 15 miles per hour. That's making it feel more like the 20s. And we're going to keep that breeze going right on into tomorrow morning. And everybody's in pretty similar territory tonight. Zionsville, Kokomo, and Bloomington all with temperature temperatures right there around 35 degrees and there's that west breeze for you as well. By tomorrow morning, temperatures are not going to slide back all that much. We'll be in the lower to middle 30s to start off our Sunday. 35 in Columbus, 34 in Lafayette and 32 in the Richmond area. Look at Truecast though, already by early tomorrow morning, most of the cloud cover going to be in Ohio. I still think we'll have a few clouds around, but we'll see some rays of sunshine here pretty early in the day. And as we go into the afternoon, looks like it should be a mostly sunny sky for us that we are really gonna enjoy here with those temperatures responding as well. We're seeing those numbers rise through the 40s, 48 degrees at noon. We'll get into the middle 50s tomorrow. We're talking about numbers that are about 20 degrees above average for this time of year. Combine it with sunshine and really going to feel like a very nice day here. 56 in Danville and Hendricks County. 56 for you as well in Hamilton County at Noblesville and 61 in the Columbus area. The one issue we're going to have is that wind that will gust around 30 miles per hour at times, but that spring feel in the air, maybe you are going to be heading off to that last day of the Home and Garden Show at Lucas Oil Stadium. Temperatures will go from the lower 40s at 10 o'clock to 55 at 4. So certainly with that breeze around, you're still going to need the jacket as you're out and about along with those sunglasses. But we're going to hold on to the mild temperatures here for a couple of days. Not until Wednesday do we get back into kind of a reality check here and highs are back where they should be for early February. That's it's all going to come with some precipitation as we go into Truecast. 7 o'clock on Tuesday morning, some light rain across the area. And then as we go into Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, that's when we'll see that colder air moving in. Could see a little bit of a rain-snow mix there. That's something we'll be watching closely for your Wednesday forecast. Seven-day planning forecast, put it all together for you. And we've got highs in the 50s the next three days. That chance for a rain-snow mix on Wednesday. And highs will be in the 30s Thursday and Friday and tomorrow. Groundhog Day, we'll wait and see what Phil has to say, but we're going to get a little bit of a taste of spring here in the next couple of days. I think most people will be pretty happy about that forecast for the first week of February. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good here, and signals are for much of the month will be on the warmer side. All right, Kyle, thank you so much. Well, now to the ongoing fight to reduce deaths from drug addiction in the Hoosier State. Today, an event was held aiming to shift the conversation around substance abuse. IU is teaming up with the Indiana State Museum to address the stigma. They held a panel discussion today in effort to educate people on this topic. The goal is to put an end to discrimination against people with substance use disorder. Leaders say the most misunderstood aspect is that because someone has made a choice to use a substance, they still have control over it and it hasn't progressed into a disease or disorder. The brain's been hijacked a little bit to where the, the the need for getting the substance overweighs normal brain function of, hey, this might cause me pain or this could have consequences in other areas. And they blow right past that stop sign. They have no problem putting their hand on that hot stove again so that they can get um, continue using. Today's event lined up with the opening day of the Indiana State Museum's new exhibit, Fix Heartbreak and Hope Inside Our Opioid Crisis. It was followed by naloxone training provided by Overdose Lifeline. Naloxone is an overdose reversal agent that helps bring someone who has overdosed back to life.
Big news tonight for a former Indianapolis Colt. Coming up in sports, the announcement for Edger and James years in the making. 9 p.m. Saturday only at Ashley Home Store. Tonight, former Indianapolis Colts running back Edron James is getting an honor years in the making. The former Colt is headed into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. James announced the big news on his Instagram account. This was the fourth time James was listed as a Hall of Fame finalist. Edron holds five Colts records, including career rushing yards. Here's what he had to say following the big announcement. The work is done, and it's just a matter of time, you know, so it's one of those things that you, you can't get too high or too low about. You just wait, and then when your number's called, you know, then you'll be right here where we're at today. Good to see there where former Colts wide receiver Reggie Wayne was also up for an induction. Wayne did not make it in the, the class this year. And joining James as the modern era players in the Pro Football Hall of Fame are safety Steve Atwater, wide receiver Isaac Bruce, guard Steve Hutchinson, and safety Troy Palomalu. The class of 2020 will be formally enshrined on August 8th in Canton, Ohio. A live look now at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Everything kind of quiet there tonight, but 24 hours from now, things will not be so calm as Super Bowl 54 will be well underway. What a nice shot. Well, the two teams playing in that big game, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers will be vying to lift the Lombardi Trophy. The game between the teams is expected to be close, so here's what you need to know. The Chiefs' Super Bowl appearance is the team's first since 1970. It's only the seventh time the 49ers have ever played in the big game. They last played in 2012. Here's what the teams are saying leading up to tomorrow's big game. For me, it's about, you know, the people that's around me and, you know, uh, really feel so fortunate uh, to, to be around a great group of guys. Um, you know, but for me, it'll be very humbling to, to be a Super Bowl champion. You know, I'm sure having two weeks to go over the game plan and, and get locked in like that, it's, it's helped these guys and all of us. But I think just... Um, you know, we know what the moment is. The big game is scheduled for a 630 kickoff tomorrow night. The blue and gold at home tonight playing host to the New York Knicks. The Knicks come out out the gate strong, keeping the Pacers to 21% shooting from the floor in the first 12 minutes. The blue and gold enter the half trailing by 11, and in fact, they wouldn't get a lead in the entire game. The Pacers fall 92 to 85. They host the Dallas Mavericks on Monday. College basketball now, IU playing on the road in Columbus, Ohio against the Ohio State Buckeyes. The Buckeyes struggled in January, looking to compose themselves in a new month. In the Buckeyes' favor is the Hoosiers' weakness on the road. Going into this afternoon, the Cream and Crimson just one in four in road wins. The Hoosiers fall on the road again, 68 to 59. IU plays host to Purdue next Saturday. And more college basketball now. Number 16, Butler playing host to Providence at Hinkle Fieldhouse. The Bulldogs looking to extend their winning streak to three. The Friars would lead by six going into the break. The Bulldogs would come back to within one with 14 seconds to go. A last second bucket would seal the deal for Providence. The Bulldogs fall to five and four in conference play. Indiana State on the road at Missouri State. The Sycamores also looking to extend their winning streak to three in a row. The Sycamores use a strong second half to outscore the Bears 78 to 68. This is the tree's first win at Missouri State since 2012. The Sycamores host Loyola Chicago on Wednesday in Terre Haute. Stay with us here. We'll have one more check of your Storm Team 6 forecast after this break. You're watching RTV 6 News at 11. Storm Team 6 working for you. Sunshine, it returns Sunday, and we're going to love it, too, along with those temperatures that will climb into the middle 50s, just a little bit on the breezy side as we go through our Sunday afternoon. Seven-day planning forecast, the 50s stick around Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday's the next best chance for some rain, and then we'll have a wintry mix coming our way on Wednesday. That's as temperatures cool back down with highs in the middle 30s. All right, Kyle, thank you. I know we're looking forward to that sunshine. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night.